Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Well, um, you know, I first came to Guilford College after a about 10 to 12 year career in the music business, worked in uh, marketing and music retail and met a lot of really cool folks, you know, hip hop artists, jazz artists, bluegrass artists. And, but I realized that my, my true love was history and I wanted to go back to school. So uh, I looked around at the different schools here in Greensboro, assumed I would go to A&T because I wanted a degree in African American studies. Well, no one, they, they didn't have that at A&T. Found out they had it at Guilford College. And someone told me, um, you need to go and you need to talk to Dr. Israel. And I briefly spoke with her and I said, this is the place I need to be. And so I came, I uh, got my degree in history. And um, during that time, I was introduced to the tree. The, not, not the tree that was spoken about uh, earlier, the, the logo tree, but the Underground Railroad tree. Um, it's out in the woods. Uh, if you're interested, I'm going out there at about 4 o'clock. And um, it was this tree, as many of you know, connected to the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad, of course, um, the, the history is a legacy of what is now our college. Uh, you know that uh, you know, we really sit on hallowed ground because of the work that happened, because of the enslaved Africans that found themselves in our woods, because the uh, people such as uh, the Coffins, who, uh, Levi Coffin and his family, who because of their uh, Quaker testimony worked for social justice. And I truly believe that the Underground Railroad is that first real social justice movement in a city that has a, a, a rich history of social justice. And it started right here where we're sitting. And I think that's pretty incredible. Um, some of you may or may not know that the tree, Tulip Popular Tree, which is not really a popular, I found out, uh, is actually in the Magnolia family. Um, but it, um, it is over 300 years old. Did a core sample a few years back, and we always knew, figured it was about maybe over a couple hundred years old. Found out it was actually over 300 years old. And so we know that this tree was a witness. We know that this tree was a witness to that social justice that was going on. We know that that tree was a source of refuge for those enslaved Africans who were seeking freedom. We know that that uh, tree was a beacon that the coffins used for, for those same folks. My first visit to the tree, Santis Beatty, who was a student here, was uh, a Bonner uh, coordinator and also um, ran the early um, version of the MED as well as a, a mentor to African American students on this campus and just quite frankly, overall great guy. And he knew of my interests and he said, I wanna show you something, so we go for a walk. And we go for a walk through the woods. And this was my first time going through the woods. So you can imagine some of the things I saw. Um, <laughs> but, uh, as we, but then we made it to the tree. And we just kind of stood there. And I could feel the vibration of the tree. Now, I'm not the Lorax. I'm not a druid or anything like that. But <laughs> anything that lives and is over 300 years old, it's got a vibe, right? And I could feel the vibes of that tree, and it was incredible. And we just, we just stood there. We didn't say anything to each other. And we enjoyed the tree. And so that was the first time I went to the tree. Second time I went to the tree, I went with Max Carter in a group, or a group that was led by Max Carter. And he reads from the reminiscences of Levi Coffin. And Levi Coffin begins to talk about how enslaved Africans knew to come to what was known as New Garden. They knew that this was a refuge. They knew that there were people here that would help you. Not only white Quakers, but people like Hamilton Saul, who was an enslaved African, and that who, instead of helping himself become free, he would work with the coffins. And those people that came through the woods, those were people that they would help become free. And as I heard Max, read from the book, could swear he was, he was channeling Levi Coffin, and I often 
feel like Max is like the voice of Levi Coffin. If I could imagine the voice of Levi Coffin, it's probably Max Carter's voice. And then the third time, and probably the most significant time that I had at the tree, I hadn't been here long as a staff person, but I, I auditioned for this show called Pathway to Freedom. It's an outdoor drama that depicts the history of the Underground Railroad as it happened here and in Alamance County. And I thought I was just going to get some bit part. I hadn't acted in years. And the guy says, well, we're going to give you the lead part. And I said, oh my god, I'm nervous. What am I going to do? So I go to the tree. And I hang out in the tree. And as they say in the manner of friends, I'm there in silence. And I'm feeling the vibes and, you know, still not quite there. Then my Black Baptist Church upbringing kicks in, and I'm like, walk with me, Lord, walk with me, walk with me, Lord, walk with me, while I'm on my pilgrim journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I had that confidence because I felt, I felt like the ancestors came to the tree and said, James, it's okay. You can do this. As a matter of fact, I think the ancestors came to the tree and said, you have to do this. You do it for us. And so that, that part of my life, which I've now done for 14 years, has been incredible. This idea that I can channel the ancestors and tell their story, a story that happened here, is an incredible part of my journey. So what does that tree represent? In my opinion, I feel that the tree whether we're talking about the Underground Railroad tree or the Logo tree, I feel like that tree represents the resilient and resolute spirit of Guilford College and its community. We're so blessed to be here in Greensboro. You know, a lot of times the school is only as good as the city or the area or the community where it is. And we're very blessed to be here in Greensboro. Um, I think about, when I think about resilience and resolution, I think about Levi Coffin and others who sought to gain freedom against the enslavement of souls in the midst of a slave state. I think about the quiet dignity of James McCorkle, who was our first African-American student. I think about the isolation that he felt, but yet, and he told me this because I was able to actually um, do an interview with him where he talked about he felt responsible. He needed to do this. He could have gone to Morehouse where everybody looked like him. But instead, he chose to come to Guilford College. He chose to be the first African-American student at this college. And that really meant a lot. And that, you, you have to be so resilient. You have to be so strong. And if you know anything about this man, if you've ever met him, you will know about what I mean by quiet dignity. I also think about the faculty and staff who have worked for social justice. Some of those folks who have, you know, actually have their lives threatened because of the work that they've done. I also think about our students the ones in the classroom, on the athletic fields. I think about the Greensboro community where we have the Woolworth sit-ins, support for immigrants and refugees, police accountability is going on now, food justice, Black Lives Matter. One thing I love about Guilford, most of our students know the difference between Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. And lastly, what I want to say is the tree is trying to tell us a couple of things. I believe. And if you go there, be quiet and listen. The tree, for example, is trying to tell us that we have a lot of work to do when it comes to diversity, not only in the world, but in, I mean, right here at Guilford College. 
The tulip poplar tree is the largest tree in our woods. It's the second largest tree in the state, but yet it lives harmoniously and it has a symbiotic relationship with all the other species in the woods. We can learn from that. We can't allow race, class, gender, sexual orientation, or even hierarchy stand in the way of having a diverse community. We must be resolute also in the face of the challenges that we face as Guilford College, but also in the world. Martin Luther King tells us it's not about where a man stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in challenge and controversy. And we know that we have a legacy of doing that here at Guilford College. So the last thing the tree tells us, and I'll leave with this, is that we stay true to Guilford College's mission to provide a transformative education that will produce civically engaged students, civically engaged professionals who will shake and quake the world and make it a better place. Thank you. <laughs>